Welcome back to Capper Review. We're talking to Christian Shepard, who's a China correspondent for the Washington Post, and he's in Beijing right now. So Christian, Team USA has 224 members of U.S. athletes, people who have worked so hard to get to this point, and we've been reporting on how a positive COVID test has ruined, if not just destroyed, an athlete's dream to compete. So what are the COVID protocols, and what happens when someone gets a positive test? When an athlete or any other participant, be it a team official or a journalist, uh, test positive, the first thing that happens is that they have to stay in their room and then do a second test to confirm. And if it's confirmed, then it will lead to a, a whole different set of procedures. Uh, primarily, that means you're going to have to move. You can't stay in your normal room. Uh, if you're symptomatic, then you're going to be in a hospital. If you're asymptomatic, uh, then there'll be some other uh, facilities provided. And, and this has been you know, a, a very traumatic thing for many athletes, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, you know, you come all this way, you've been doing all this training, and then you seem to fall at the last minute for something which is kind of out of your control. Uh, and added to that difficulty is the fact that uh, originally there wasn't a great uh, facilities, you know, food uh, in these isolation rooms. Uh, so we had a lot of athletes coming out saying, Look, I'm not getting enough to eat. I don't have access to my right training equipment. The IOC in China have you know, reacted quite quickly to that. Uh, I think they you know, were aware that this was not a good look. Uh, but it's still, you know, it's a real disruption to uh, the pace of events here. And you know, it's, it must be absolutely heartbreaking for these athletes. Um, and it's amazing to see them. You know, they're posting all these images of themselves in their isolation room, you know, still going through their training, staying in shape, staying focused. Uh, but it's always going to be tough. Yeah, I can't really imagine what they're dealing with. So I also understand that the Olympics are within this closed loop system, kind of a bubble that's closed off from the rest of China. What has the day to day been like for you there and are journalists limited in their travel? Yeah, so we cannot go anywhere that's beyond hotels, um, the designated buses, the train lines and the venues. That's it. Uh, so everything is literally walled off from the rest of the city. And, uh, you know, it, it's to the extent where uh, the Beijing government was warning other uh, drivers that if they got into a crash with an Olympic vehicle, they should stay away from it. You know, don't go close. There's potential for an outbreak. Um, so, you know, we're very limited in what we can, what we can do, what we can see, who we can speak to. Um, and we also have to go through the, the, daily testing. So first thing you do in the morning, uh, you go outside the door of the hotel and there's someone who puts on big rubber gloves and does a, a PCR test. Uh, and if you forget to do that, as I did the other day, then you're going to get a phone call pretty quick to remind you to come in and do your daily test. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very closely monitored. Um, and that's to make sure that, you know, if they, someone is uh, carrying the virus, then they're very quickly isolated. And Christian, what do you want Americans to keep in mind and viewers to keep in mind while they're watching the Olympics this year? Well, I think the thing that you have to keep in mind with these games is, you know, if you're a sports fan, great, enjoy the sport. You know, it's, it's an amazing feat. And, you know, like me, you're going to learn a lot about all these incredible new sports that are being introduced and sort of people being pushed their limits. But I don't think you can really ignore the broader context of what is going on here. You know, China might say that it's not politicizing the games. There's no way that that is the case. Um, there are political signals everywhere. There is the broader issue of how the IOC is dealing with more authoritarian states. Uh, and I think that's all kind of part of the picture now. Uh, even if the athletes are going to keep it out of their mind, I think for the rest of us, we need to be aware that this is the Olympics now. Christian Shepard, Washington Post, China correspondent. Thank you so much for being here all the way from Beijing. My pleasure. Have fun out there. And also when we come back, we're talking to the CEO and co-founder of the Virginia Coalition Against Human Trafficking. Stay with us.